All right, Dwayne, we are back for another week of making it happen, or excuse me, make it happen podcast with Morrison Plus Property Inspections. How are you doing, Dwayne? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Chase? I'm doing well. I can't help but notice that you aren't in the office here with me. Uh, do you want to give a little uh, highlight of what you're up to um, over the next couple of days out of the office for all the people who might be listening out there? Well, I was kind of hoping you weren't going to ask me that because I'm up here actually doing secret training. Oh, secret training. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we're, at, we're, at, we're at altitude in the eastern Sierras. I'm at about 8,000 feet right now, hoping that uh, over the next week I can increase my red blood cell count. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. That's I'm nice. not anemic or anything like that. It's just uh, we're doing a full Ironman next weekend. And yeah, so, you got to got to get the body the body ready for uh, for a big race. The full Ironman. Yeah. How how many miles? I remember the World Championships was seventy. Excuse me, seventy point three. How long is the full race? Well, the full distance is a hundred and forty point six miles. Right, it's just double of the seventy point three. Nice. Uh, where you essentially go swim two point four miles, which that's a long swim. This is going to be in a river, though. Okay. Uh, uh, it's going to be in the American River. Again, uh, or with say again against or with the current. You know that they're saying. Well, it's supposed to be a downstream, but you know everyone's getting in that river and saying there really isn't much of a current. It's it, maybe a little bit. So hopefully it helps. But anything helps. Um, so it should be a fast swim. Uh, and then you know you get on the bike and you ride 112 miles, <laughs> uh, which is you know, bigger than a century ride, essentially. And uh, then uh, you get off the bike, uh, do a couple of goo packs and put your tennis shoes on and you go run a marathon. There you go. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, easy piece of cake. A piece of cake. <laughs> Don't you have to be in an altitude. I'll, you'll, uh, you'll do just fine, I'm sure. But um, again, before we uh, kind of get into uh, some deeper topics and what the main topic is today, uh, first off, I want to say go Dodgers. Yes, sir. For anyone who might be watching the Dodgers won last night, they took um, they took the series against the Giants for all the Giants fans out there. Stop hating. We all know it was a bad call in the last strike, <laughs> but you would have taken it, too. So uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, great series. Go Dodgers. Cody Bellinger stepping up after a, a tough season in terms of, I think, his overall average, but came in the clutch once again, uh, which is always cool to see. A lot of the young dudes is pretty special to see, I think, the Dodgers organization specifically. Cody with- Bellinger, Chase. Cody Bellinger is the epitome right now of what it means to make it happen. There you go. <laughs> uh, that, that, is, that, is, that is try to actually maybe make that uh, connection prior to bringing it up. I just want to give a quick shout out to him. But he did make it happen last night. I think he was 0 for 3 prior, for, prior to that, I bet, mm-hmm. uh, with not. To be honest, not very quality of bats. I'm pretty sure, uh, from what I remember. But there, yeah, there's a, there's a few. Um, oh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm, I have a mic today. Actually, my name's Mackenzie. I'm uh, behind the camera. There you go. But he did have a few at bats. Well, he had one at bat where he was touching the ball. We was fouling him off and not really getting solid contact. But it's foul. Yeah, but fouls are still good. Those big moments are pretty cool. But, seeing yeah. people step up and. Uh, he stepped up it's to the plate and he made it happen it. for uh, for the yeah. Dodgers and put them put them in the lead. Um, and so for all the haters talking down on him because of his batting average for the season. Um, what doesn't do really matter, does it? <laughs> what do you, you, you got to say now, right? So uh, <laughs> Out of the first that's, how I, that's how I see it. Bring on Atlanta, baby. Bring on Atlanta. <laughs> it, was, it definitely was a pretty tight series. So. Yeah, it was, it was it was a fun, entertaining, entertaining series to watch. Um, I think that's probably going to be one of the biggest series of the postseason. For sure, hands hands, was, hands down, two, two probably two of the best teams in baseball right now. So exactly, so it was a that was a pretty exciting thing. Um, I think the only thing that we said that could be cooler is if the Astros make it to the World Series with the Dodgers, and we have a little bit of a rematch on our hands. That would be a pretty cool, special thing to see too. Um, well, I I would prefer the Yankees. I'd like Dodgers Yankees, but we'll take the Astros. They're they're, they're in uh, okay, whatever. Just just just, just to give it to them, and yeah, then just, just to, to, to put an exclamation to, point at the end of it. Exactly. All. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll take it. We'll take right. it. Um, but bring it on for anybody who wants to come challenge the Los Angeles Dodgers. But enough of baseball. Uh, even though it does actually tie into make it happen. And again, I want to over the next probably episode or two or series of this, I want to continue for to remind those 
who might not have seen the last couple updates, but we actually did change our name for our podcast from Franchising Fridays to Make It Happen. We felt that it better fit the direction of what we're trying to talk about. Uh, I think the podcast itself really isn't changing in terms of the content we're putting out for you. There's going to be some minor changes and we're going to continue updating ourselves, making ourselves better. But the name Make It Happen, I think, better encompasses everything that we're kind of going after. Um, Because we're going to be talking about franchising. We're going to talk about home inspections, business mindset, business ownership, um, and kind of every everything in between, I think, is... uh, I think the name make it happen uh, falls better into uh, into that category. So I know I'm excited, Dwayne. Dwayne, I'm sure you are excited as well. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about innovation and teamwork. And if you want to hear more topics from us, head over to our YouTube channel, make it happen. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, like the videos, share, comment, uh, and just Like I said, share with anyone out there who might be interested in any of the topics I listed prior uh, or who might just be uh, looking for some entertaining uh, conversations. So just going to give a quick reminder of that. And we will be posting our podcast both on Facebook and YouTube Friday afternoons. Um, So just be on the lookout for that as well. So, uh, Dwayne, I'm going to kick it off to you to get going on your topics. Um, I know you're going to be talking a little bit about innovation and teamwork, and I'm going to be, I think, talking about some similar things as well, uh, but I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so the floor is yours. All right. Well, hey, uh, uh, welcome everybody to our revamped, revitalized and new podcast, I guess you could say. Uh, we're now Make It Happen. Uh, and so excited to be uh, discussing a, a more pointed direction as opposed to uh, something that is more, uh, I guess you could say niche where we're a little broader topic now, which is nice. gives us a little more freedom, um, uh, which is directed more towards business ownership mindset and franchising. Right. I think you've already kind of talked, uh, you know, highlighted that, um, you know, this week, Chase, uh, I was reading some articles, uh, from Inc magazine about Elon Musk. He seems to be in the news a lot. Um, and we, you know, we just, we, we love Elon Musk. He's, he's, he's an amazing individual, very inspiring, uh, richest man in the world, uh, owns the best car company in the United States right now, as far as, uh, gr- how it's growing and, uh, how innovative it is. And so one of the things that the article I read in Inc. Magazine, uh, uh talked about was how Tesla is outperforming Ford, Chrysler, uh, Chevrolet, because microchips and you uh, know i'm pretty sure not to not to cut you off too hard Dwayne, but i'm pretty sure they ha- they're on like their best they set a new like record i believe from that article i think you sent over is that correct yep. where yep i think they're quarter th- three of this year or yeah i think their quarter three of this year was the best quarter up until this point in a time where cars as pe- many people know are at a very low end in terms of inventory um, yeah, so it's a pretty, pretty cool stat to see, I think. I mean, I did have to wait two months for our Model 3s, <laughs> but still, I mean, they're 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 kicking them out way faster than everybody else. You know, they have a huge their their, their, their number of orders is up. But one of the, the whole point of, of bringing this up was one of the things that I really enjoyed about the article was is the reason a lot of the car companies can't manufacture the cars and produce them the way they used to. And the reason order, they can't just kick out the orders is because of the microchips. Uh, microchips are outsourced. Uh, they're produced in China, <laughs> right? I mean, in, in, in other countries. And uh, so what Elon Musk did is he found alternative sources to buy microchips. Uh, but to do that, you can't just buy microchips to put in the cars. You have to reformat the programming to fit the, the, the microchip. Right. And so they got forward thinking. They did some innovation. They were able to source microchips from other places and they reformatted, did, reformatted their software programming to fit those new microchips. And then what they're doing now is, is they're delivering the cars with the promise they're going to just send an update when they have updates for these microchips. Did, did, did I get that right, Chase? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, I think the the issue again, like you said, the microchips nowadays, cars are just essentially bigger, 
computers. They're no longer just mechanical right. engines and things of that nature. And these microchips play a huge portion, I think, in all new vehicles. And I remember reading that people were pushing them. They're like, why don't you just go and make a microchip factory? And his response was, <laughs> As great as that would be, that isn't something that just happens overnight. Uh, essentially, I think is like uh, the gist of what he was getting at. Um, and the resources to build a microchip factory would be uh, pretty immense. Uh, I'm sure they could do it if they wanted to, but they found another way to innovate. Um, and we're going to always tie back to it, make it happen in terms of um, growing his business and not allowing the worldwide shortages that have affected just about every other large motor vehicle company out there uh, to affect him and his business. So I thought it was a pretty neat thing that they were able to find a way to uh, get around it and continue to uh, keep the ball rolling. You know, uh, here at Morrison Plus Property Inspections, we've been really uh, uh, hitting the gas on trying to come up with different ways to innovate our software. Uh, you know, that's why it was so interesting to read that about what they're doing and refreshing. I mean, and, and, you know, it was what I was surprised at in the article. It said, well, Ford and Chevy and Chrysler, they're deciding not to do things like that. You know, they're just going to wait for when microchips are read, more readily available, you know. And so they're, you know, and those are big, large companies with very bright and smart people, uh, uh, contrary to what, you know, some of the bad press does say about some executives, right? I mean, they have the biggest, the bestest, and the brightest, um, you know, but in small, and in, in for them to be thinking that way, you know, it, it, that just proves my point that not all companies are the same. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll hear from our customers, well, all home inspections are the same. And it's just like, no, they're not. <laughs> all home inspectors are not the same. And, and, and not just inspectors, obviously, you can see people have different personalities, but home inspection companies are not all the same either. Uh, uh, they're just not. And so in our, in our uh, company, one of the things we really been hitting the, putting the pedal on, on uh, putting the foot on the gas pedal has been, you know, the software programming. So, you know, one of the big issues when you're at a home inspection is it takes two to three, sometimes four, or even five hours to inspect a house. And one of the, the, the important aspects of providing uh, top notch service is understanding there's a customer experience. And that translates into all businesses, whether it's Tesla, whether it's Ford, whether it's Apple or Microsoft or just even the local restaurant down the street, right, or, or your hair salon. The customer experience is where you really need to see innovation and companies that provide that innovation are going to uh, go to the next level and they're going to have a tremendous amount of uh, success. Uh, and so we've really, really are, are, are focusing very pointedly on what it means to provide a higher next level customer experience. and. And then, so you, you, you say customer experience, but what a lot of, I think, companies get wrong is the employee experience, right? I mean, to, yeah, to, I think it ties in and the employee experience directly affects the way that the business is going is to operate on a daily basis, right? And then it, in turn is going to affect the customers. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so you want, you want the, the customer experience to be top notch. Well, if... Your, your, the ownership experience or the employee experience or the executive experience within the company isn't a higher level quality of life. I think I said that correctly. Everybody understands that, right? Yep. If your quality of life at where you work in your workplace, and I've, I'll, I'll often referenced the Japanese, right? When, when, I was, when I was a young man, the U.S. workers got a bad rap. The Japanese used to bang on the U.S. worker, Right. We're hardworking. We, we'll work 60 hours a week. American workers are lazy, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then you hear the cliche, well, it's not a job, it's a career. You know, there is something to be said with the customer experience. Everybody's, everybody knows, well, not everybody, but most people should know by now to work at Google, the, the, the employee experience is paramount. They have a whole compound there, right? You go in there and they have a cafeteria, they have, you know, I think a, a babysitting. They've got, uh, you know, a place for you to go. I don't know, play video games. I don't know. It's 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 like going to a, a very like like Disneyland almost, right? They don't want you to leave. They want you to work long hours. 
They want you to be happy. They want you to have a great customer or a great employee experience. And so, you know, I think innovation uh, moving forward from where we're at right now, 2021 and into the next, at least where we're looking at with the next eight years between now and 2030, companies that provide an outstanding employee experience with innovation and innovation with a customer experience are going to be out competing and changing the world. I mean, as far as, you know, uh, here in the United States. So I, I, um, I agree with that. And one thing I want to go back to really quickly, I remember you mentioned how these large companies like, for instance, Ford or Chevy and Chrysler and all these large companies who are deciding not to do anything about the microchip shortage and decide. And you even said that they have some of the big, the, the brightest individuals probably who work for them. Right. Because they're giant corporations, giant companies. And you tied that into how not two car companies are the same, not two home inspection companies are the same. Right. I think it all boils down to no two okay. people are the same. So when there's no two people the same, you can't expect companies to be operated similarly. Um, I think maybe uh, a baseline a little bit to it, but um, as a whole, when you have when you're dealing with individuals and people, you're going to come up with uh, different creative ways and different or I guess more creative individuals. Uh, for instance, Elon Musk decided to take the next step and his team is probably being promoted to be innovative and find a way around the microchip shortage versus settling with it. Yeah, I mean, they're writing articles about it, right? <laughs> because it is, it's pretty cool. It's exciting. I mean, uh, uh, you know, he, he's Elon Musk is some somebody in business you want to emulate. Mm -hmm. The guy, you know, sees, sees a block wall in front of you. I mean, I'm very similar. I, I, I mean, it, as far as my mindset goes, I mean, I'm, I'm not as brilliant as he is by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think anybody at our company is. The man is just a genius. But, you know, when we see a challenge or we see adversity, we don't stop. We, we just, you know what, let's just, let's just go at it head on and let's figure it out. That's why we titled our podcast what we have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because, you know, there's sometimes you can't do that, but you just don't give up. You know, I mean, you, if you want to go meet the goal and you want to do something exciting, you got to have like-minded people around you and you got to have uh, some drive. You, you have to have an ability to innovate. I mean, um, it, and it, it takes passion. And so, uh, you know, here, here at Morrison plus franchising, <laughs> we're all about uh, next level customer experience. And this is something that uh, we're, we're going to be uh, rolling out uh, in a platform uh, over the next coming months. We're going to have a conference in January and it's going to be a big deal. Um, I think we've narrowed down a keynote speaker that's that's aligned with our vision. Um, that, that's breaking news. I don't know if you even heard about that yet, Chase. We'll talk to you more about that here coming soon. There we go. Um, and, you know, we, we're also working on cutting edge technologies. I mean, without giving up too much to our competition, because we don't want them doing the same thing we're doing. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, but I mean, we're constantly working on formatting our template for our customers. Our, for, I mean, for our inspectors, right? We want our inspectors to be able to write a report while they're on site. When they come home, they're not writing reports for hours and hours and hours. You know, the report's pretty much done. Mm -hmm. And then the customer gets the report in a timely manner, like six, six seven o'clock in the evening. Um, you know, during the height of COVID, we, uh, to limit customer contact, you know, you know what we did to innovate? And this just sounds very simple. But not all home inspection companies did this. And probably not all companies around town did this. I didn't see them doing it. I still see hair salons taking cash. Mm -hmm. You know, we accepted online payments. And that was the only way we took payments because we didn't want any contact with customers. And we had all our contracts, all our contracts or inspection agreements sent via DocuSign. Our inspectors loved it. <laughs> they didn't have to get signatures and scan documents and attach stuff to the report. It was just automatic. Um, you know, and so those are innovative things that we had to kind of jump into action and and just implement right away uh, uh, based on what was happening, you know, in the throughout the economy and in the market of us working in that environment. Um, you know, I, I wrote down a bunch of bullet points for the for this podcast as far as other things that we're doing that are innovative. But uh, I, I'm only going to talk about two of them because I think they're more they're more sensational and people probably would enjoy them more. And that is, you know, over the last couple of years, we've really uh, uh, started providing uh, more drone inspections, more infrared inspections. You know, while we still can't, infrared cameras, contrary to common belief, can't see through walls, 
but they kind of can, <laughs> right? right? I mean, you know, and so uh, th that's those are very innovative things that haven't always been around. And due to uh, the technology of drones uh, uh, and infrared cameras, it takes a lot more training. It takes a higher level of intelligence and background to utilize those tools, but they're innovative, right? And, you know, we, we're continually having to provide additional training uh, because, the, you know, when you're innovating and you're doing things that enhance the customer experience, uh, as an employee, when you're working for a company, I know you've, you've all experienced this before, when, when ownership or management implements technologies that are innovative, it can be it can be threatening. It can be challenging. It can be scary. It can be like, uh, I don't, I'm not used to this. I don't know how to do this. And it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but anything hard or any, anywhere you work that, that stretches you and presses you to, to utilize things in that way. And that with it, you know, in the nature of things like that is where you want to be. It just really is. And so, uh, I'm really excited to kind of talk about that. We we're we're uh, uh, doing a lot of neat things with innovation. Uh, who who would think that you could provide innov innovation in inspections? Right. Uh, yeah. There's almost there's an opportunity everywhere. I think for for any career, but it's I guess when you're not really involved in it, you don't really see the the possibilities of it. And it's kind of it's really neat and exciting to see, like you mentioned, well, different things that we've been doing. Uh, yeah. When, when all the cars chase become self-driving and not, everyone can process the reports while they're sitting in traffic, that will be innovative. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. And yeah, hopefully uh, the, the the cars don't have any issues with uh, with that. So I'm sure Elon Musk is on his way to, uh, I think he already he's almost already there, I think, but I'm sure he'll have that, that dialed down in the next couple of years. <laughs> well, ho well, hopefully that's through all car companies, right? Yeah, all car companies will have the technology to do that. Then we probably won't even have traffic, right? Because there won't be stop and go. So, yeah, as long as they don't turn on us, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was, my robot yeah, situation. That that portion. So, how about those Dodgers again? What 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 happened last night? Dodgers. Did the Giants lose? The Giants I think the Giants lost, lost last night. <laughs> Giants yeah. did lose last night. I mean, I couldn't. Man, even, I, I, we were we were cracking a joke. Uh, me and Mackenzie, a couple other buddies, who were watching the game. Uh, because obviously the game was at Giants uh, at Oracle Park, uh, right? You know, away game from us. Even the announcers were against, were clearly against the Dodgers. It would be like the it honestly was kind of ridiculous. We, we were we were we were cracking up because like the Bellinger when he hit that ball, rather than highlighting like his good hit, they went back right. and showed his three other strikeouts or no, not three strikeouts, but his Dude. three other at bats where he nice. got out and talked about how. He just wasn't putting it together in those at bats. And well, of course, of course. Over the fact that he just had the go-ahead run. Uh, well, that, they, that's they that's did, why it's such a great rivalry, right? I mean, they're haters, man. We hate each other. <laughs> they did it countless times. I thought it was. I was just cracking up because it was so obvious right. how much they wanted the Dodgers to lose. But and it was throughout the whole the whole entire game. Like they were, they kept talking about it the whole game, and it was like. I, at that point, it's like turn off the commentary. Oh, when Bueller was pitching, they're like, "Oh, Bueller gave up." Da 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 da. And I, I was listening to it. To, yeah. So it's all about beat LA. It's all always is. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, that's, he, that's, he could have struck out the side, and then they could have been talking about ten games ago how he gave up five home runs. Or something <laughs> right. like, yeah. Like, yeah. Somehow trying to knock him down, but uh, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that was pretty. Hurting. Somehow, some way, it's always against to, the Dodgers. Uh, Listen. Well, they're, well, they're going. They're going all going fishing this next week. So you know, right. whatever. Yeah, they're good. Hey, they're yeah. they're having a good time this next week. It's going to be good. Yeah, good. It, it'll be a good time. Um, but jumping back on track with um innovation, I have a couple topics myself, or a couple, I guess. Yeah, topics or ideas or just ways to encourage innovation within your business or within. It doesn't necessarily have to be within business, but as uh just within your life and with those around you um, that you're dealing with. Um, because essentially the question is, how do you promote innovation? And I'm going to specifically talk in a business setting. Uh, and that's through adopting the mentality to think outside the box and to promote thinking outside the box and not being afraid to fail through innovation. Um, Cause I think at any point in time, if you were, being pressured or nervous to where if you it's either you get it right or you're fired 
then it might be kind of hard for you to be creative and really try to stretch uh, your imagination and stretch your mind in ways to be innovative, right? And so it's a lot of mental pressure. I yeah, think. it yeah, it definitely can be a total lot of mental pressure. And it's uh, I think and also when we get caught up in work and our daily tasks, daily tasks of our jobs to where the creativity within us kind of gets pushed down and off to the side because it's not a priority in our daily lives because we're working it. We're worried about getting back on the get, answering back emails and doing the daily tasks that we're required of. Um, and that creative side tends to be pushed off mm -hmm. uh, for later, maybe to never even see the light of day at one point or another. But the first way, the first way to promote and to encourage innovation within, I think, a organization is to promote intrapreneurship. So entrepreneurship is one thing where someone is going out and they're starting their own business. They're going out doing their own thing. They're looking outwards for an opportunity. Intrapreneurship is the opposite of that, where you have to formulate a culture where employees are excited to share their ideas of how they can benefit the company when rather than and when you're able to do that amongst your employees and kind of cultivate that mindset of sharing ideas and making the company better then employees won't take their ideas and go run off and start their own business with their ideas they're going to come take it to their managers and the supervisors in search of maybe the promotion that they're wanting to get um or something of that nature and it keeps the ideas within the organization which obviously helps everyone i think involved um, so that's one well, way. And it also gives the company uh, a, a resource, right? Because when you have enthusiasm, there's more enthusiasm to do a good job because you're being heard and you're excited about what you're doing uh, and, and you're thinking about what you're doing and trying to make your what, what you're doing better. I mean, you know, when you're doing that from within, that's golden. Yeah. And, and I think also a good example is... Um, uh, Google, like I like you mentioned, um, I think Google has a lot of um, polarity in terms of current day, current topics and current political issues and things like that going on, and just the whole internet sure. type of stuff. But if you look at if you pull all that away and you look at just how you mentioned, I uh, like the Google campus where they are they are setting up themselves for their employees to never want to leave work right. actually because they have the food courts and they have the, the volleyball fields or the vol the volleyball um, sand pits outside and they have the sleep pods like men Mackenzie mentioned and all these amazing resources to where like if, if I had all that, that disposable here in the office and obviously we're not Google, right? So we don't have the billions of dollars sure. to go out and do this kind of stuff. But if you're in a setting like that as an employee, I mean like why, why go home to your one bedroom apartment when you can be, <laughs> hanging out at work all day long, not only being productive in your career, but also being around like sure. individuals with all these resources available to you. That's the same exact thing. People aren't going to go try to outcompete Google as an employee. They're going to take an idea and try to improve Google because they're just so, I think, almost intoxicated with this like enjoyment of working for the company because they promote that, that entrepreneurial mindset and right. the, the energy and the creativity levels within their employees, which I think obviously allows a brand such as that, um, such as Google, who's at the scale and size that they are to even get there in the first place. Um, it takes a lot of work from the inside uh, to get there. So that's one way I have in terms of, or one thought in terms of promoting innovation within your company. Another one, and these all kind of go hand in hand. Another one is to minimize barriers. And so oftentimes, business settings and office settings can be very bureaucratic, uh, right? With dealing with uh, the, the politics of an office space, right? And the the red tape, so to speak, of getting things done and the, the, the process of getting things done can be very boring at times. And it's the system that a lot of businesses have it set up to where if I'm an employee and I have this idea that came to me, if I have to go to HR first to then get clear to go talk to the next guy to then have that idea be brought up to the the the, the board of directors, the likelihood of my idea really flowing through that entire process and actually seeing the light of day and having action being taken on that idea or a serious consideration is probably a whole lot less than if I had direct access to 
maybe some kind of innovation team that works within the office or some kind of specific leader that employees can go to to share their ideas with who can then convey that message to the the higher ups in a sense um it gives employees the proper access i think to share their ideas and something like an example would be with us specifically when an inspector has an idea of how maybe the template should be formatted for a certain verbiage or a certain situation that they're calling out they could come to us and share their ideas with that i remember with our google reviews we were having issues getting them out the, the google reviews that we wanted in terms of the number of them and so right. a way to make our google reviews more accessible to our customers and that was all done through innovation through people willing to yes. share ideas and collaborate with each other to find ways that work um which is pretty neat because then it makes it it makes it exciting when you start seeing those Google reviews as an example to start coming in, you're saying, oh my gosh, my idea worked. That's pretty cool. And it just continues to pro promote that that spirit within the office space. And I think within the company um, to share your ideas and to try to better you, not only yourself, but better your company and allow your, your fellow employees and fellow peers to benefit from it as well, I think is a pretty cool, a uh, little pretty cool thing to, uh, to say you you had a piece of um which is always really nice i think a lot of employees are looking for an opportunity for their name to be heard or their their ideas to be uh promoted and then also rewarded in a sense too right i think rewarding innovation and rewarding your employees or at least incentivizing them to be creative um is a great strategy and ties back into the promoting entrepreneurship and things like that i think Going back to Google again, I think they have like a mandatory like rest period within their day, if I'm not mistaken. I think I read that somewhere where employees have to take a mental break. Right. I mean, they're working all day. So it's not it's not like they're getting there at nine, leaving at five. They're getting there at like five in the morning and then leaving late at night because they're well, I mean, I guess it really depends on what your job is. If you're if you're a coder, you're going to be there all day and then you have to have mental breaks and it, it it goes on the sense that the the mental pressure with work with when, when Dwayne brought it up brought in about Japan and the Japanese people about work is that they have a very high suicide rate for work so mm -hmm. it's, it's understanding that your company needs to be innovative in the sense that you need to be on the same page that every person matters because one person could have a random spark of genius mm -hmm. spark 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 of genius and change a whole aspect of what you do you know so yeah and like allowing for people to i think take a mental break from their daily tasks promotes again more creativity and opportunity to think more fluidly and not right. just so laser focused on doing the tunnel vision the tunnel vision exactly of your daily tasks that i think most people get sucked into i think that's kind of how people's kind of lives almost flash by them because they're so worried all the time with their with their daily tasks they kind of miss out on the opportunity to right, right. take a step back and to think creatively and find ways to be innovative maybe whether or not it's for the benefit of their company or they're just looking to make their job their own job easier um either way it's a sense of creativity and a way for them to uh to work that uh, which goes into something that you know, we've talked a lot in the past about is that work-life balance Right. And that, that ties directly into what we were talking about of uh, being focused and being stressed or overloaded and losing your desire to be creative. Because, um, Dwayne, I mean, I'm sure you can come up with plenty of examples to where you're so laser focused on handling five or six main tasks throughout the day that you might miss sight of an opportunity to sit back and like really actually just critically think about how to be innovative or kind of the bigger picture, more creativity type of um, type of type of topics that we're on, kind of mentioned on right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's correct. Yeah. It's just, you get sucked into work is it's very easy to get sucked into work, especially when you're passionate about your work and, but it's still important to kind of think, just take that step back um, and try to have that balance, promote that balance within your organization, because then that allows your people to come into work refreshed ready to go with a mindset of let's not only get our work done but let's find a way to be innovative and to make changes and to create 
something special with what they're doing on a daily basis. And I think that falls in a sense, the responsibility of if you're an authority figure within your office, whether you're or the owner or the manager or a department head, I think it's part of your responsibility to facilitate that innovation because when you're a, in a position of power in work and in a career, you should be going up and asking, I think, employees and other fe fellow peers, hey, how, let's say, for instance, um, I don't know, I'll use the CRM as, as an example because it's the first thing that came to my mind. How can we better manage our contacts? And then that now allows an employee to think, okay, well, right now I'm doing XYZ, I'm typing into an Excel spreadsheet. How can I make that easier on myself? And that person is, is going out and doing research. Right. And the other person's going out and doing research and everyone's kind of collaborating and that's all done through the boss essentially allowing you to think creatively. Cause if that never happened, a lot of people losing their lack of creativity are just going to be stuck in the mindset of, well, this is my job. This is the only way to do it. Right. No one's told me to look, uh, look elsewhere for it. So I'm not going to try to bring something up in fear of backlash for any reason. Cause some places are not open to suggestions and a lot of bigger corporations, things like that. Um, sure, 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 sure. And I think it's up to your, the authority figures within a workspace to promote it and to facilitate it and to kind of force those thoughtful questions of what can be done differently, what can be changed. Like I know one thing we did a couple months back was each department put together a slideshow slash presentation of what are we currently doing that's working. I remember because remember you, you Dwayne, for those who aren't aware, they Dwayne asked all the different departments to put together a presentation of how can we rewrite the script in a sense of the department that keep the things that are working and how to re rewrite the things that aren't working and essentially be creative and innovate. Um, and that was something that I definitely enjoyed taking part in because it allowed me to now think freely. Not that I didn't think freely before, but it really promotes and I think excites people and excites employees within mm -hmm. an organization to, um, uh, to be creative and find something cool and like, and just find a passion for something. Right. Um, that's pretty neat. Like, I know I'm certainly excited for the CRM. If I think I get the first, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I get their first report back from the first, uh, string of emails that got sent out today, uh, which I'm excited to take a look at. And then now I have a, a thing to dive into and try to continue to innovate and continue to improve over time. Um, and I think it's pretty cool because knowing that you have the ability to be creative, I think allows that whole entire process to uh to flow a whole lot easier right I, I think the people that are listening that they need to understand that innovation comes with failure as well right and as an entrepreneur you can't be paralyzed by the prospect of failure well i mean it, it's important to identify areas where, where you're you know, not having success. Right. I mean, right. Right. You know, uh, it, it, <clears throat> I mean, a lot of people think, oh, what I'm doing is good and I'm focusing on all these things I want to do right. I want to be better. But sometimes people miss. You really got to take a look at the things that you're not doing so well and you have to recognize there's 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 definitely something to be said about recognition of things that aren't being done in an optimized way. I right. mean, I have, know, a then, quote. I have a quote from <laughs> the classes I took um in college and it's i pulled up right here it says successful entrepreneurs learn to fail intelligently right and right. that's a huge aspect that you have to understand that not everything's going to work and use those things that work in an innovative way so then you can improve your company experience well i've always i've always said some the difference between some of the greatest women and women and men and women in history is they want to know at the end of each and every day where, where they failed. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did we, what did we do today that wasn't all that great, right. you know? And, and they, they wanted to recognize that where a lot of the people that, that are running businesses right now, uh, a lot of business owners are a lot of people in management that, that get to make decisions, right? Um, uh, even employees that, that make decisions on how they, you know, even at the lowest level, 
don't want, they want to hide what they're doing wrong, <laughs> you know, and, and that, that's, that's stinking thinking. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't want to hide what you did wrong. You want to embrace it because that makes you better. It, it forces you to be a, it, being accountable. When you force yourself to be accountable, you become better, right? Unless you just don't care, you know, um, and then that's a problem unto itself. And that's a different topic, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, innovation comes out of recognizing exactly what you said, McKenzie comes out of recognizing and looking at, you know, how you're failing. There, there's, there's a real estate team that I'm going to give a shout out to the Burns team. They're outstanding. They, they sell hundreds of houses, uh, you know, yearly. Um, I think they're averaging 200 a year. I mean, they're, they're a whole team. And one of the things, uh, that, that they have, uh, I've heard them say is, uh, I think that, and I think, I don't know if it was just Fridays, like we had franchising Fridays, they, they had Fridays, uh, they failing forward Fridays or something like that. Right. You know, they wanted to know how they, what, where, where they failed this week or, you know, where they, they wanted to know where the failures are so they can fail forward. That's forward thinking. You're looking back, you're not dwelling on it you know, in, in a negative way, but, but you're recognizing, you know, where your failures are so you can be better and, and not fail in those areas or, or do your best to try not to. And, and you can't even do your best to try to make intelligent decisions not to, if you're not looking at it and figuring out how did that happen? What did I do? You know, and so it's not easy. It's complicated. Uh, yeah. So it's fun stuff. Um, so what are we doing, Chase? I mean, uh, are, are we franchising here? What, what, what's going on? Who, who, who's, who's, how, are we, how is this podcast powered? <laughs> this podcast is powered and sponsored by and brought to you by all, all, all three all the by More Simplest Franchising. And for those who are interested in learning more about the benefits of franchising, uh, whether it be just home inspections with us specifically, uh, which I would love to chat with you about, but just if you're interested in just learning more about franchising, how the process works, I'd love to talk with you as well, too. Our phone number is 866-881-5027. We're going to be throwing that up on the screen here in a sec. Uh, and again, I'll repeat that one more time for if you're just listening. The phone number is 866-881-5027. Give us a call. I'd be happy to chat with you about the not, the, not only the benefits of franchising, but how our current franchisees are performing um, in a time period where I think a lot of folks are struggling with jobs um, yeah. and have those issues. We're blessed to continue moving the ball forward and to be in an industry that is continually running with a, I think, unlimited amount of business um, availability out there in terms of being able to find work and where you want to teach you how to cut out your piece of the pie. Um, and join the Morrison brand. So yes, give us a call, go in a bit, you, or you can visit our website, www.morrisonplusfranchise.com, um, and just take a peek at all the information we have for you. Um, but other than that, Dwayne, that's about all I got. Um, mm-hmm. I'm excited. Um, we got a couple of phone calls today with some potential candidates, I believe, uh, later on this afternoon, which is fun. Um, sure. I was looking forward to those. Um, again, go Dodgers. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to think if there's any other things I want to wrap up with. Um, other than that, Dwayne, just stay safe if you're out there running around on the trails and things like that. We don't need any uh, sprained ankles out of you. No, no, no. I'm going to go on a bike ride today. I I, uh, I got 10 visits at the uh, local uh, club here in Mammoth. Nice. Uh, it's 20 bucks a day, and they got a lap pool there, and they got you know, great gym equipment, Cybex gym equipment and stuff. Um, so I'm going to do some minimized workouts. We're in the taper period, so nothing too crazy. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, meet your body to high elevation and then get down to Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need to heal up. I mean, I, I've been doing some long workouts, hundred mile bike rides, you know, 20 mile runs a lot. I mean, nothing, pretty much nothing, but t- 10 mile runs on trails and hill hills for the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, my thumb still hasn't healed up from that fall I took before worlds. So I'm trying to get that healed up, but. Uh, we're excited to go to Sacramento this next week and go visit one of our franchisees up there, Victor Solis, um, and kind of visit with him and spend some time with him and then also do that, that, that Ironman there. And so, you know, we're shaking, we're moving, we're excited. We got a you know, new title here on our podcast and, uh, uh yeah, again, like subscribe, you know, any, any support we can get, we unabashedly will take it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, just continue 
to interact with our posts. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, we love seeing different comments and different likes. Um, again, I said this, I think just about every podcast, um, but give us some topics you want to hear from us. Um, we'd love to chat with some, some of you guys more kind of one-on-one with uh, topics that you might find interesting. Uh, I think that'd be a fun little segment for us to do and to dive into here in the future. But other than that, we're going to continue our own innovation here at Morrison Property Inspections and continue, yes, to, make, we are. continue to make it happen over here as well, too, as we've been doing for, for forever now. Um, but until next week, um, everybody out there, stay safe. Um, and we will be uh, chat with everybody soon. And Dwayne, enjoy your time up there. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon. All right. See you soon, guys.